do. Pearson, that's right. They, that's they, what you do, Richard they, Dawkins. They, they, what, about Richard Dawkins? Richard Dawkins? what about Salman Rushdie? Salman Rushdie, Rushdie done, what happened to the Salman Rushdie, it, it, it was us, they asked him. They asked him, please withdraw. Apologize because we have been offended. We draw and apologize for what you've done. But, you done. You may not. Why should he? Why should he? Uh, but why shouldn't he? Then why should the Islam would not? Islam did not put as a blasphemy on him. If there is a fatwa coming from one kind of one kind of uh, sex of Islam, do you support the death yeah. sentence against Salman Rushdie? Uh, it's, it's not a matter of I support the death sentence <laughs> or not. Islam. We are talking about Islam now. Myself, I would have said, I would have said, Mr. Salman Rushdie, God bless you. Let's talk. Well, yeah. Richard Dawkins, That's you were wanting to come all the way through that. I just was interested in what you were wanting to say. <laughs> Salman Rushdie was, had effectively his, his life ruined by a fatwa uh, because of a book that he wrote. Now, you can hypocritically say, I would have said that, but your religion did that. He got very more famous because of what, what, what the people gone against him. He got ten times more famous than he should be because his, his, his uh, satanic verses does not want to read. But the I read through that the penalty for apostasy is death. A degree, we have a degree of penalties. Degree, we have, we have some scholars. In some countries course, it is, yeah. Some yeah. scholars, some scholars, for, for example, uh, like yourself. Okay, these are scholars, they go against the religion, they go, for example, I give exa against Islam, but they don't put the, they don't put the uh, uh, death sentence on you. That but some on which is international right. goes, yes, they Lord do. Carey, Lord Carey, we were just discussing before the program how amusing you thought uh, Monty Python's Life of Brian was. Um, uh, we were discussing that, and I thought that was interesting because many Christians, or some Christians, perhaps I should qualify the statement, found that to be deeply offensive. It, it, where do we draw this line? Well, let's get back to Jerry Springer. Uh, I've got every sympathy, actually, with um, the Christian voice. I think um, because I think there's a, a groundswell of people, many Christians in this country, who feel that the Christian faith is being subverted, that the politicians seem to ignore it, um, that the Christian tradition, our ethos, <laughs> is in danger of being jettisoned. And that's the background, you see. Mm. Uh, and no doubt, Jerry Springer and the opera is very offensive to some Christians. Having said that, I'm against a blasphemy law, and I've said so on many other occasions. And the reason why I'm against it, I mean, I would take it back to the scriptures themselves. There is Jesus approaching his crucifixion. Simon Peter comes along, lops off the ear um, of one of the, the, the soldiers. Jesus says, put up your sword. That's not my way. And it's not his way to defend. Christianity is big enough to defend itself. I believe in a free society, and this country owes so much to the Christian Western tradition. And I think, Richard, you ought to be jolly grateful. You've been, your writings come in our tradition with the, that strength of the Christian faith, which can take it on the, on the chin. I we agree want with to that. Get <laughs> Can I add one second to speak to these two gentlemen? One further thing, I do back Jonathan in saying that the time has come to repeal the blasphemy law, which has served its use, if it ever served its use, um, but it's redundant. Um, and I th think it now gets in the way. It gets in the way of other faiths because they say the Church of England is being defended, Special but treatment. we are not. Special yeah. treatment. Get allow, me, uh, allow me to speak to these gentlemen here, because you, you uh, Andy, and yourself, James, you work, uh, James Carey and Andy, you work in a very secular world. You're a stand-up comedian, you're a comedy writer, you're a screenwriter. Writer. How do you reconcile that with your faith? Because you're both Christians. Andy? Well, I think without, without free will, without free speech, there can be no comedy, can there? Uh, yeah. And we can't just put restraints on what people say. I think I'm, you know, fervently a Christian, but you know, I, if I got offended every time somebody blasphemed yeah. on stage, I couldn't, I couldn't do my job. Uh, and I think as Christians, we're, on the one hand, we're so keen to point out what is bad and what is wrong about mm. society. We need to be more focused on what yeah. Christianity has done for good and what's good about life. I think, I think that first and foremost. What about Jerry Springer? Chris? What do you make of that? <laughs> Um, because a lot of people say in defence, uh, you know, M Mark Thompson, the, the Director General of the BBC, said this is not lampooning Christianity. It is, in fact, a parody of exploitative television. I think that's true <laughs> to, to some extent, and um, there were probably different ways of making that point other than the way that the writers chose. Um, but but it, it doesn't bother me particularly that they chose that particular route, even though, you know, I myself am a, a Christian, and I was genuinely offended by about sort of 10 minutes in the second half where I was 
quite astonished at how imaginatively offensive uh, the, sh <laughs> the show was. But in, in a sense, we need to, we need to be aware that um, artists and myself as a Christian writer, am I going to write um, about the world as it is or the world as I would like it to be? Mm. And part of me, I, I have to portray the world um, as it is. And in so doing, that's going to be difficult and offensive. And so I guess I need to always remember that my faith is completely informed uh, by, by the Lord Jesus, who told a lot of stories. And a lot of people were very, very offended by those stories. And there are sort of parts, I've been looking at John's Gospel recently, where he starts telling a story. And people are like starting to pick up rocks, you know, and they're getting ready to throw them at him because his stories are so incredibly offensive. <laughs> So we need to be very careful that... You had that on stage, people throwing rocks at you? I'm just uh, no, <laughs> bottles <laughs> once. Uh, <laughs> often in Glasgow, actually. Yeah. 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 Tough crowd, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah I mean, it's, that's, that's an excellent point, but Dan Whittacombe, is this not about robustness? A, a, a religion having the confidence to be able to, to take the brick bats and the knocks and to say, look, we're strong enough? Well, it does it all the time and has to do it all the time. What I actually said uh, was that I thought that there had to be a suggestion of some limits, a suggestion of a boundary, a, a question mark in your mind. And that is best supplied by a law that is not often invoked, uh, but that is nevertheless there. Why should certainly, it be invoked? Can you I provide thought, us with a possible example of when this law should be invoked? Well, it was, in, it, was, it was invoked in 1977, and I thought quite properly so. Um, I think there was a case. Uh, for invoking it uh, with Jerry Stringer, but it was decided not to bring it in the public interest. Fair enough, that decision was taken. But the point is, it had to be taken. There was a reference there to some sort of boundary. Okay. okay, thank you. Fascinating. What are people saying at home, Sonia? <sighs> yeah, interesting views. One says that blasphemy laws are ridiculous. It's the law's, is it the law's job to protect my feelings at the expense of someone else's freedom of speech? Uh, David in Glasgow says we can't claim to have free speech whilst the law exists. Uh, Heather says she'd rather hear Christians complain about injustice and poverty rather than something they've watched on television, thinks it's a waste of time. And then there's John who says religion essentially is nothing more than an idea. So not to be able to criticise or comment on that, ridicule it in a democracy, doesn't make any sense to her at all. Uh, two more questions we'd like to hear your thoughts on. Can we live without lying? Maybe you've been in a situation where it's been better to lie. What's the worst lie you've ever told? And should religion only be for grown-ups? Have you changed faith, for example, as an adult? You can call, text or email right now. Ah, ah, <laughs> there we are. So John yes. joins us. I'm with John Barrowman, singer, actor and fearless talent show judge <laughs> as well. So uh, this whole Jerry, wow. Jerry Springer yeah. thing is, is a fascinating area, isn't it? Because you were offered a part in it. I was. I was offered the devil in Jerry Springer to do it in the United States. Podcasting again. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, actor, can play the devil. <laughs> uh, doesn't mean I behave like him. Um, the, uh, the thing for me, I mean, we're, we're commenting on uh, a show here, and I do, does God really care about a West End show, a Broadway show. I don't think that's the, the, the be all and end all. And, and, and the other thing is that if you, blasphemy in the sense that the, the show itself is, um, the people who are talking about it, have you seen the show? Have you seen it? I've read the transcript. You read the transcript? Some of what's in the show, having read okay. the transcript. Then she does have a right to comment on it. But most of the people who do want to comment on it and mm. do have that kind of thing and saying about, you know, it's blasphemy, have never seen it. And my philosophy is if you haven't seen it, you don't, you can't comment it, keep your mouth shut. Mm. It's really not, you know, you have to see it to be able to comment. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll see what people think when we get some questions for you later on. Yeah. And also the other thing I was interested with the spirituality and religion and the current um, rows in the church, as an openly gay man, did God make you gay? Uh, I think I was created gay. I was born gay. Mm. I did not wake up one morning when I was nine years old and decide that, I wanted to be gay. It that didn't happen that way. That way. It was the way I was configured. Yeah. And uh, if anyone, you know, you can argue that with me all you want, but um, the person that you argue it with is my mother, and she'll stand by me on it. So will my father. There's, there's. I don't believe you wake up and decide. Why would I wake up to decide to become a minority? Uh, you know, if you are, if you are born black, you're born black. If you are born. Uh, white, you're born white. If you are born gay, you are born gay, and that's the way it is. Mm. That's in my that's my belief. Was it a big moment?